How about Joe Flacco and the Cleveland Browns set to take the field tonight against the Jets here at First Energy Stadium. Daniel Jeremiah now joining the Insiders. DJ, what is up, my man? Great to have you. Always great to have you. I want to talk about that, Joe Flacco. Three straight games with 300 uh, 300 yards passing. No Browns quarterback. None. You got that jersey with all those names on it? None of them have ever thrown for 300 in four straight games. What's impressed you most about Flacco? I had some conversations with some Browns folks, and they said he's not getting enough credit for what he's doing off schedule, which is not his strength, by the way. Yeah, it's been impressive, man. Uh, First of all, great to see you guys. Uh, To me, the thing that's jumped out, he's he's had no benefit of a running game. It reminds me of kind of like when you're growing up in the neighborhood and you're saying, okay, you're the all-time quarterback, there's no running. That's how the Browns are playing. It's all on Joe Flacco. And he's made some... You know, kind of those YOLO throws that he's known for of, you know, fit and ball and a triangle of defenders. But I also want to give Stefanski some credit here because when you go back and watch those games and you just watch a cut up of all their explosive plays, quite a few of them where they've been able to scheme it up and get guys free and clear with Njoku especially, a fine way to get him uncovered. So I think it's been a nice blend of a really good scheme and Joe Flacco, who's like his give a darn button is busted. Like he just doesn't, he doesn't care. He's going to let it rip, which is kind of fun to watch. Somebody brought up on the call this morning, hey, was DJ in Baltimore when they drafted Joe Flacco? No, DJ was actually on staff with the Browns, who didn't have a pick in the first three rounds that year because they had (laughs) carried all of them away, including one for Brady Quinn. But I digress on this, DJ. Let's talk about a team that's not functioning as well offensively right now, the Kansas City Chiefs. It does not look like the Chiefs offense we have seen at any point in the Patrick Mahomes era. What is the problem? Well, you know, it's interesting watching it. Um, I actually watched their tape right after watching the Miami tape, and it was like, man, it just hits you in the face with how explosive and dynamic Tyreek Hill is as well as all the other weapons they have in Miami. Then you flip on the Kansas City tape, and guys are just getting plastered all over the field. Like, there's just not a lot of separation. The field has shrunk. And I I don't want to absolve Mahomes of, of some criticism here as well because... I've seen him throughout his entire career, you know, working and calling Charger games. I see him twice a year. I've never seen him drop his eyes uh, like he did last week against the Raiders, kind of seeing the rush, aware of the rush. He bailed out of a couple clean pockets. You know, he's plenty of pressure on him you got to deal with. But when he did have a clean pocket, he was looking to get out of there uh, just not comfortable. And I think that's a sign of a lack of trust, not only in his tackles, uh, but in his guys down the field to get some separation. You know, there were so many times watching that game a couple of days ago when I'm like, are we sure this is Mahomes? Like he, obviously, like the, the yeah. mannerisms and the arm, it all looks the same, but the way he's actually playing is kind of different. And this season, DJ has forced us to be like, all right, we know the guy's on the field, but did we – like there's been a lot of performances we haven't expected. Like, for instance, Joe Flacco being awesome, Patrick Mahomes being not yeah. as awesome, Jalen Hurts for the Philadelphia Eagles having moments where you're like – is this offense going to be what it was last year when he was an MVP candidate and looked like he was someone primed for a massive contract extension, which he eventually got? Should we be worried about the Eagles' offense and Jalen Hurts? I think there's legitimate concern in terms of what it looked like last year to what it looks like this year. It hasn't been the same. You know, I would just caution on a couple things with them is they had a really rough stretch of opponents playing quality teams. Um, and and didn't perform well. Jalen hadn't been 100% healthy, as we all know. So I think there is some hope. These last three games, you know, last week they got out hot and then kind of slowed down a little bit, but they've got two more very winnable games to maybe find a little momentum going into the postseason. And, you know, one thing with those guys is they have so many veteran players, uh, especially look at Kelsey and Lane Johnson and company. Those guys tend to have another gear once you get into the postseason. So, you know, let's let's see how they, you know, how they look once they get into the tournament. But I think the schedule is pretty favorable these last three games to maybe get a little bit more confidence going into the tournament. DJ, just a couple of days away from the start of the college football playoff. I'm excited for these matchups that we've got going on. But it's sort of like getting closer to draft season now. We're going to talk to you about specific pro- uh, prospects as we get along. Don't you worry, your pretty little head. You're going to get plenty of airtime, buddy, in the next four months. Uh, but talk to me about the position groups as a whole. Which ones are the deepest as you start to assess them? Yeah, you know, I'm working my way through it now. It's like one of my favorite times of the year to really start doing a deep dive. And uh, I'll tell you what, so far what stood out to me, the depth at quarterback, it's going to be a fun year, which anytime we have quarterbacks makes our jobs easier. 
Um, there's a lot of depth there, a lot of quality. The offensive tackle group is excellent. When If you're watching football of your favorite team on Sunday, you know the need league-wide there. So we're going to see a bunch of offensive tackles go early. And then wideouts, just to put a number on it, that's the position. I'm kind of just finishing up the top group of guys. I've probably watched about the top 25 names that were presented to me. I gave 10 guys what would account to like a top 50 grade. So that's the level of wow. talent we have at the wide receiver position. Nice. And by the way, why we have all of you guys up on screen, let's leave you guys on screen here because I want to go with the look you guys are all going for here. Uh, let's start with Mike G. Mike G is going for if they decide to do another reboot of Fletch, uh, he's busting out the tan jacket. That is the look that he's going for here. That's what he's trying to get accomplished. Uh, let's go to Ian. Ian is going for the look of, you know what? I just got off the Peloton. I just crushed my avocado toast. Now I'm going to have a little coffee, Probably and then did. I'm going to try and give the people the best information uh, possible. Absolutely. Tom, true. now finally, Tom is going with the, you know what, guys? As soon as this show is over... I've got to give a speech in my 10th grade English class. So I'm going to dress up a little bit, but yet still present this kind of cool vibe, you know. So that's kind of the look that, that Tom's going for there. Uh, DJ, your scouting reports are always great, especially when oh. they are about us. We look forward to talking to you again many times here as this offseason rolls on. <laughs> Draft season almost here, baby. Let's go. Bengals. Let's go. Chiefs coming up this Sunday. Which version of Patrick Mahomes Shows up, Baldy's going to break that down along with our own James Palmer and a lot more to come here next on The Insiders. With NFL Plus, football never ends. Let's go! Get wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the NFL Combine, free agency, pro days, and the 2024 NFL Draft. Follow every move your team makes this offseason with the insiders and get expert analysis you won't find anywhere else. That's a perfect dream. Watch full, condensed, and all 22 coaches film replays of every game. I'm looking at the big screen all the time. I ain't blocking nobody. Get classic shows from the NFL Films Library, mic'd up content, and NFL Plus original series all at your fingertips. And stream NFL Network for 24-7 football news and coverage on any device, including your connection. TV. No matter what, that's the call. It's everything NFL in one place, and it's only with NFL Plus. It's a frustrating experience right now, and um, every single day we're going in here fixing it. I promise you guys. Uh, and it's not just one guy. I, I'm. It's not just me playing like. It's not just. Uh, us not being able to get the run game going. It's not just us not being on the same page passing wise. It's, it's everybody's in this thing together. Everybody at some point um, isn't being accountable and we all just got to bring it together, man. New lows on the New Heights podcast right there from Travis Kelsey talking about the struggles of the Chief. Our Brian Baldinger, James Palmer going to be covering that game. Chiefs-Bengals on Sunday. A lot on the line for both these teams. But, Baldy, right now, this doesn't feel like a potential AFC championship preview. This feels like two teams kind of scrapping and just trying to figure things out. Let's start on the Kansas City side of things. You've watched them. You break down a ton of tape. What do you see? What is not going right right now in Kansas City? Well, I think the biggest thing, just from a schematic standpoint, is they can't get explosive plays right now, Tom. And so when you're not getting explosive plays in this league, like against the Raiders right here, I mean, they just couldn't block Max Crosby. You know, I mean, he was just disruptive.